Hey everyone, welcome back to another video by Camroom5. In today's continuation of stereo isomers, we're gonna be talking about optical isomers. Remember last time we talked about the fact that stereo isomers have one category known as optical isomers. But before that, we will practice a question for geometrical isomer so that it helps for our revision. Imagine I'm giving you a structure which looks like this. This is the skeletal formula. First name it and then make the geometrical isomer. Now in order to name it, we will find the longest carbon chain. We could number it from left or right. Since the double bond is closer towards the right side, I would recommend numbering from the right side. So I have numbered it 7, 8, 9. So it's a kind of nonane. You can see OH group and a methyl on carbon 3. So here the name will begin with methyl and its position number. You will call it 3-methyl because 3 will signify the position of the methyl group. After 3-methyl you will call it non because there are 9 carbons but you won't call it nonane. It will be nonene because there is a double bond on carbon 3. So nonene 4 ol It's nonene ol Now when you talk about geometrical isomers, notice the double bond and redraw it. Now I would recommend flipping the easier side. For me, carbon 4 is more difficult. So I am redrawing the exact carbon 4 with OH at the bottom and long carbon chain on the left. Now for carbon 3, I am flipping the methyl group and the 2 carbon chain which is 1, 2 carbon. So instead of at the bottom, I am making it from the top. So now methyl is coming from the bottom while carbon 1 and 2 are coming, at the bot coming from the top. For carbon number 4, everything remains the same. You can see on carbon 3 the methyl is now coming at the bottom instead of the top while carbon 1 and 2 are now at the top. For carbon 4 everything is exactly the same. That is how we draw geometrical isomers. I hope geometrical isomer is clear for us and we are ready for talking about optical isomers. The definition of optical isomers is rather long and I would highly recommend you guys noticing the keywords. Optical isomers are the stereo isomers that are non-superimposable, they are not superimposable mirror images. It's an important word that they are non-superimposable mirror images of each other around a chiral center. Now chiral center is a new word for us and rotate plain polarized light. Plain polarized light is also a new concept but it's not a part of the AS syllabus. We'll have an another video on this topic but notice the words that they rotate plain polarized light in opposite direction. Let's revise the definition that they are stereoisomers. The next important phrase is non-superimposable mirror images. And the third phrase is chiral center. Now, what's a chiral center? A chiral center or a chiral carbon is a chiral is a carbon atom which is bonded to four different groups. It's a carbon atom bonded to four different groups. It could be atom, it could be molecules, whatever, but they have to be bonded to four different groups. It never makes a pi bond because pi bond means double bond. A chiral carbon never makes a double bond. For example, look at the structure of butane to ol. Butane to ol has four carbon atoms. It has OH group on the second carbon. 
the other carbon atoms have their simple hydrogen atoms. Now I want you guys to focus on carbon number 2 which has the OH group on it. You're obviously numbering from the left side so I have OH group on carbon number 2. Now you can notice it has OH at the bottom. On the left side it has a CH3 group attached to the main carbon that, that's in the focus right now. On top there's a hydrogen and on the right side there's a C2H5, two carbons and five hydrogens in total. So on the left there is a CH3, on top there is a hydrogen, OH group at the bottom and on the right side you will count the entire C2H5. If I want to draw the structure in a way that focuses on the chiral carbon, I'm drawing the 3D structure with CH3 towards the left, a wedged line to show the OH group, it's a tetrahedral structure remember, and a dashed line for the C2H5. These four groups are different from each other and they're all bonded to my central focused carbon known as the chiral carbon. Now imagine this structure the black sphere represents the carbon atom and the other colored circles are different groups. The green, white, blue and red. They are all different and attached to the same carbon atom. When you rotate the structure, you don't feel like any isomer possible for this one. Now imagine another structure which is on the right side of a very similar molecule. It's also a carbon atom bonded to four different groups. It's look, it looks like exactly the same. It feels like there's no difference. But now look carefully. If I notice, they are mirror images of each other. And if I try to superimpose one structure on the other, it's impossible. Look again. If I notice, they are mirror images of each other, but they are non-superimposable mirror images. And that is why they are called chiral carbon optical isomers. Now draw the optical isomers of the initial butan 2 ol The butan 2 ol was also having one chiral carbon. In order to draw a non-superimposable mirror image, non-superimposable mirror image, just draw your carbon, draw exact mirror image of the structure. This time the CH3 would be on the right side rather than left. The wedged line would be coming from the left with the OH and the dashed line would also be towards the left which is C2H5. This is how we draw optical isomer 3D structure. I hope the concept of chiral carbon is clear. We don't call it cis and trans, we call it D and L. D means dextrorotatory and L means levorotatory. Now you would be like, what does that mean? You don't have to talk about it, it's not in the AS level, but I'll make a video on that still. Now try some practice question. Notice this big ass structure and let's try to find out as many chiral carbons as we can. For simplicity I'm numbering all carbon atoms and the methyl group let's, let's call it like carbon 7. Yeah. I'm making small copies of the same structure for you to focus on one carbon each. Now focus on carbon 1. Carbon 1 has two hydro three hydrogens at the bottom. Carbon 1 has three hydrogens at the bottom. One, two and three. So it can't be chiral. It's not chiral at all because it's making three bonds with the same kind of atom. So it's not chiral. Let's focus on carbon two. When you focus on carbon two, you can notice that at the bottom it's bonded with H 
and another bond is the CH3 group and third is the OH you can see OH H CH3 and the fourth bond is this entire chain attached with carbon 3 the fourth bond is this entire structure guys don't just call it carbon the fourth bond is the entire structure and they're different so carbon 2 is chiral focus on carbon 3 carbon 3 has hydrogen on top and there's this whole big structure at the bottom the CH with OH and the CH3 this whole structure is at the bottom so that is one group on top it has hydrogen on right side it has a CH2 and NH2 group which is carbon 7 which is the purple part and on the left side it has this whole three carbon chain focus on the whole chain as a different group so carbon 3 is also chiral carbon focus on carbon 4 now on carbon 4 you can see there's a hydrogen on top and there's a hydrogen at the bottom so it can't be chiral guys because not chiral why not chiral because it is bonded to two different two same groups rather so both of them are hydrogen it can't be chiral so I hope you'll be able to figure out whether carbon 5 6 and 7 are chiral or not well in the next video we'll do some past paper practice of optical isomers stay tuned guys thanks